All right, welcome back to uh, my channel. Actually, today I'm actually going to talk about the uh, ThinkPad X1 Extreme second generation. And for those of you that don't know, Lenovo actually announced that they're coming out with Gen 2 of the X1 Extreme. Supposedly, it's going to come out in July, uh, just because all of the press releases, that's pretty much what they said. However, I did have one uh, person that was actually on my channel that chimed in and said that they told him it was possible, I believe, that it could come out as late as October. In any case, another guy that was actually making comments on one of the videos, he ended up calling the Lenovo, and they actually said July to him. So it's yet to be determined. Um, in any case, if you actually go to their website right now, you can see that they already have a placeholder up, and they do list some of the specifications. The reason why I'm making this video today is because I've been getting questions on whether you know I should buy uh the current generation or if i should wait for the second generation to come out and i'll tell you you know it really depends on your situation which is kind of how i've been answering uh most of the people that have asked me this question but i guess today because there are some specs that are available on the website i decided to kind of look at those and kind of you know at least get my advice based on you know what i would probably do if it were up to me because right now i currently have the gen one and I really, really love the Gen 1. So far, I've updated the hard drive because if you watch that video, I thought it was a better bang for the buck for me to do it myself. My next upgrade will probably be either the uh, memory card or maybe even the Wi-Fi card. So I'm good, to be quite honest with you. However, I did decide that I would make this video just to kind of look at some of the differences. And to make this a little bit easier, what I actually did is I created a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet, I basically took a lot of the specs that were actually listed on the website. There's some stuff that still isn't there. And uh, I put it side by side with the current Gen 1 specs. And the thing that I would I would want to point out is really the red denotes the difference. So these are the things that are actually going to be changing on the Gen 2. And then the, the ones that are highlighted are the ones that I really kind of want to talk about more so. So if we just jump right into it, the first thing we talk we will talk about will be the processors. Granted, you know, Intel, they're always releasing a new generation. Uh, the one thing I can say about the ninth generation processors is, for me, in any case, is uh, so far from what I've seen on uh, sites like, let me jump over here, like Notebook Check, which is right here, as well as your user benchmark, uh, I really don't see a significant difference between the I, uh, or I should say the current generation as well as the upcoming ninth generation. So that right there alone would not be the main reason why I would jump, um, or I should say wait, or even upgrade this particular laptop. Granted, you're gonna get a, a slight performance boost, but for what I do, I just it's not significant enough. The one thing that I will point out is you can also get an i9 uh, 8 core so you can get an octa core processor on the gen 2 now versus the hexa core which is actually currently what i have on mine i don't actually have the 8750h i have the or excuse me i have the 8750h not the 8850h but needless to say if i was looking at the gen 2 i would probably be more at the 9750h uh, once again getting six cores i really don't see a need for eight cores but Maybe you do. Not to mention the fact that from what I've seen with the i9 cores, uh, what you actually get versus how much you pay me personally, I would rather have a Xeon processor, but you're not going to get that uh, with this particular series. So I guess it's good to actually have an option. However, um, yeah, I uh, this would right here, I, I would actually really need to see more performance benchmarks. Like I said, if you jump over to notebook check and you look at uh, user benchmark. There are some uh, performance uh, benchmarks that have been put up, but not a whole heck of a lot. You'll notice down here they actually don't have some of these even checked yet for that 9750. And even the ones where they have benchmarked it against the older generation, like Cinebench R10, once again, there's not that much of a difference. So 
I'm curious to see once they start putting up other uh, benchmarks. I want to really want to see what the gaming performance looks like on both of these, because that gives me an idea how well they'll do, at least in my particular setting. So jumping back over to my handy dandy spreadsheet, we'll press on. Uh, operating system didn't change. Windows 10. You can also get Pro. You can also get Pro for Gen 1. I actually have 10, so I just left that up here. Um, here's another significant difference. There is a uh, more, there are more options for your screen. And if you've listened to my previous video, one of the things that you will notice is I actually really like the uh, the fully HD screens, the the 1920 to 1080. Uh, and even though, you know, some people might say 300 nits, which refers to the brightness, is a little low, I think it's fine. Uh, the one that I really enjoy, or I'd say I would probably entertain is what I should say, if I were buying this laptop, would actually be the other full HD they're going to be releasing, because it goes up to 500 nits. That's one of the things I will say. I'm, I'm all about brightness, so that means if I'm outside working in the sunlight, I'm just having a little extra to maybe allow me to see the screen a little bit better, I'd be okay with. Um, not a huge fan of 4K screens. And one of the things we'll eventually get to the weight, but over on the Gen 1 side, this, the uh, website actually shows that there is a weight difference between 4K and the Full HD. By the way, 4K screens actually consume more power too. So therefore your battery life starts to go down. Once again, for me, this one works better. However, I get it, you may utilize, or I should say, you may use this particular laptop for, um, you know, some sort of uh, editing or something that requires finer detail. You may require the 4K. So if you jump over to this side, now you'll see not only do they have the newer, or I should say they offer a an, an additional uh, FHD screen, but they also offer an additional 4k screen that's oled so just more options i think that's pretty awesome in all actuality um they didn't put how how bright this screen actually is i'm gonna say right now it's probably 400 and it's mainly because there is a 400 nits um touch screen but it wasn't oled so it's got to be between 400 and 500 i don't know but in any case if you decided to go with the ips 4k you can get that one up to 500 so that's actually pretty bright uh, moving along the next big deal in my opinion is going to be your graphics card so this is another one that i really haven't seen a whole heck of a lot um, in this particular application because i'd like to see it perform with this processor or i should say with these processors but i have seen benchmarks for the gtx 1650 max q versus the current uh, gtx 1050 ti that's in this laptop. Uh, this is actually a really good graphics card. But here's the thing that concerns me. Uh, the frame for this particular uh, device didn't change a whole heck of a lot. As a matter of fact, if you jump over here and you take a look at it, it looks very similar. So this is Gen 2 still. Let me just go up to the top and make sure. Uh, there are a couple of things that change very like slightly. But for the most part, this is the same frame. And because it's so slim and so small, uh, I would be a little more concerned with introducing heat. So that's what I'm wondering about this card. And then also the, uh, like I said, the, the newer generation processor, the fact that you may get a little more heat putting on the TDP, but that has yet to be seen. So I'm curious to see how it handles these two combinations. But by far, I would think this is a superior graphics card to the current generation and then moving along here see this didn't really change camera's going to be the same uh the ram you can still go up to 64 gigs of ddr4 and uh the 2666 megahertz uh but one thing they did and this was amazing to me because every press release that i watched they did not mention this i personally think this is significant especially if you're a creator of some sort and you need space so like I showed you on my particular uh, laptop, I was able to upgrade my second SSD. So I had an empty space, put in a one terabyte SSD, and I'm at about a, a terabyte and a half. I can go up to two terabytes. But now they're seeing that somehow or another, they're able to uh, go up to four terabytes. And I'm, what I actually need to find out more about is the motherboard, just because I'm trying to figure out how they went from this 
to this if the motherboard didn't change significantly. So I'm, I'm just curious uh, because what I'm wondering is maybe this can go up to four terabytes. I don't know, but I do think this is a pretty big deal. Frankly, I think this is one of the things that I wish they had have highlighted because yeah, you know, having this much storage in a laptop and you know, that's one less external drive I need to keep with me. Um, it's pretty neat. And then the fact that if for some reason, you know, prices start to come down and they always do, uh, now four terabytes of the uh, NVMe M2 uh, SSD is affordable, then this right here is just this killer. It's a great idea. Moving right along, the battery life appears to have gone down. Um, there could be a couple of reasons for this. You know, maybe it's because these processors aren't as efficient or it could be the GPU. I mean, if you think about it, this thing right here is actually going to be clocked a little bit higher than this one. Uh, and then, like I said, you have these different screens. This screen and this screen, when I say that, I mean your full HDs, uh, the, the base model ones, I don't think that they are any different and they changed at all, but I won't know that. So there's something that's, that's causing this to drop because the battery supposedly is exactly the same. Um, yeah, so it's kind of weird. They did change the way that they listed port security um, on the website. I just try to make this match as close as possible. But what I will say, if you don't see something over here, like for instance, the Gen 1 has a smart card reader, it's probably because it got moved like down to here on the ports and slots, which you can see there. So not that big of a difference. Uh, and then if we keep going, by the way, I did have a chance to compare the pictures just to see and other than there's a few minor things they changed on the chassis, it really looks identical. Uh, the one thing that I will say about the chassis, however, is now you can get a carbon fiber weave if, if that's what you want. I wasn't clear on whether that is optional or if that was something that actually is going to be on every laptop. Uh, and I won't know that until they start selling it because then I can go in there and actually just look at the specs. You know, and I think that's just totally up to you, uh, you know, your taste. Me personally, I could care less about my laptop looking like carbon fiber. As long as it's built out of it, I'm good. I don't necessarily care for a weave on something like this, but maybe you do. But like I said, it wasn't necessarily clear on the website whether, you know, that was going to be an option or just that was going to be every website or excuse me, every uh, laptop. Okay, so moving on to the next big change. And that's going to be your Wi-Fi card. So now you're going to get the Intel, uh, really it's your Wi-Fi 6 uh, AX. So Intel released this, I believe, back in April. And if you're not familiar with Wi-Fi 6, probably the better way to look at that would be to look at, like, uh, if you are familiar with terminology of 4G and 5G. It's that sort of difference. But the way that I understand it is... It's not necessarily meant to show you a significant increase in performance. What it does do, however, is it kind of like mitigates the impacts from whenever you have everybody that's sitting on the same uh, frequency. So in Wi-Fi's case, you know, you're either going to be on 2.4 gigahertz or you're going to be on 5 gigahertz. And because you're only using those two, uh, eventually you're going to get some kind of uh, degradation in the actual signal, which may cause your speeds to slow down. Supposedly Wi-Fi 6 is going to make that better or less of an issue. I also read that there is a 30% uh, performance increase. Once again, that's something I would have to actually test or at least see some benchmarks to say that that is the case. Uh, and actually, I think that 30% may have come from um, I think it came from Intel's website, which was like here. Yeah, when they released it. So, but once again, this is the manufacturer. I don't ever believe anything they say. I, I wait for results. So, yeah, the cool thing about the card, and the thing that I would say is if you were looking at the Gen 1, don't let this hold you up. Um, I'm pretty certain that this uh, graphic, or excuse me, this uh, Wi-Fi card is going to work with the motherboard that's in the Gen 1. And this is actually a fairly cheap upgrade. I believe Intel was saying it's going to be like 16 bucks. And I think when I went to try to buy it, um, right when it came out, just to see what it would cost, uh, I, I believe the most expensive I saw it was like $30. So, and this is a 
pretty much, you know, pop-in uh, affair, you know, very similar to updating the SSD or an, um, or the memory. So nothing too significant to install. So then moving on, there is also your dimensions. They didn't really change, but one of the things that I'll say here is on the generation one, because you had two options of screens, your dimensions don't change, but the weight does. So I'm expecting the exact same thing for this other laptop. So maybe your 4K is probably going to be very similar to this 1.8 kilograms or 4.06 pounds. Uh, I don't know if the uh, OLED is going to go up from there. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Keyboard, all that stuff stays the same. So what I'm going to do if um, you're actually, if YouTube will allow me, I'm going to try to actually post this spreadsheet uh, down in the comments section of the video. And then if you have any questions on this, feel free to ask. Uh, I am welcome to entertain or to say to try to answer as best I can. But what I'll tell you right now, my personal opinion of the Gen 2 is I'm going to be sticking with the Gen 1. I don't really see anything in here that makes me want to say, uh, yeah, I want that laptop. The other thing I would point out is, and one of the things I did like about this laptop was the fact that they spec it with a processor that you actually can't even get, actually these two processors, you can't even get them in the Legion series, which is actually over here. So the Legion Y uh, 740, um, the highest processor you can get right now is the 9750H. And once again, that's like right here. So there's an 850H and then also the 880 h which is of course your a core so i think that's a pretty neat thing uh, but once again this is a way smaller frame than the legion the legion is a gaming laptop it's gigantic it has a capability to cool a lot better when you have all these components crammed in there so maybe it's a good thing maybe it's a bad thing i tell you what if for some reason lenovo ever got the bright idea to put a track point on a legion uh i would jump ship in a heartbeat i would actually stop buying think pads and buy legions because for me the track point is where it's at i do like portability but i also like power and because of the price point of these laptops uh yeah in a heartbeat but right now you know i'm a think uh think pad person so sorry i digress but going back to my opinion i would stick with my gen one if it were up to me unless there was some other reason why these things made a lot more sense or they were going to be more useful if i picked them up so that's all if you got any questions feel free to leave them down below and that's about it agent fit signing out